There are a few phones released each year that really match the popularity, the kind of brand awareness and the power of the Galaxy S series. And if we look back to last year, the S21 Ultra is one of the biggest and probably one of the best in recent years. But let's examine where it stands in 2022 and beyond to help you decide if it's worth picking up. So before I actually get into the phone itself, I'm kind of of the opinion that if you do want a great smartphone and you don't necessarily care about getting the latest and greatest or even spending a fortune for that instance, then you should probably look at the previous generation Galaxy S or any other flagship phone for that matter. And you'll probably be left very happy and with a lot more money left in your pocket. The same process applies this time around, but let's get into the why of what that means relating to the S21 Ultra. So I'm going to say, at least from a design perspective, I think this is the best looking Galaxy phone since the S10, which personally I'm of the opinion that it's the best looking smartphone of the Samsung series so far. This device though with its matte black finish, I think is genuinely lovely. I don't even know why it's so good. It's hard to explain. Maybe it's just that I'm kind of sick of glossy finishes and they tend to feel a little bit cheap or look a little bit cheap in the hand. I'm not sure why I like this so much, but I will say that I like it up front. There's no denying as well, this phone is a big old boy, but if you want small phones, then I would say go look at something else and maybe even look at the smaller S21, which is actually quite small compared to this. This is a slab and it's a slab with soft, smooth curves. So that kind of um, alleviates a little bit of the issues that you would necessarily have with really, really big phones of yesteryear. And I think that's going to be important because Samsung has resisted the urge to copy Apple and kind of add awful sharp corners and flat edges, which I think something over the years, the Korean tech giant has been a little guilty of kind of copying Apple over the years, at least over the past few, it hasn't been the case. And it is the same here with the S21 Ultra. I think personally, that's especially important because this thing, it is still massive in the hands. It's big, it's heavy. And even with that mammoth camera bump, I think it does have great balance in the hand. There's, there's also a few benefits as well because the matte glass is not only less fingerprint prone, but I think it's grippy and it has a nice little tactile texture under your fingers. You probably don't care though. You're probably gonna stick this within a case and be done with it and that's absolutely fine. But just be wary that within a case and then a few extra millimeters here and there on each side and each bezel, this is gonna be a big old phone in your pocket. So I get it, the design doesn't matter so much when you almost always keep your phone in the case though. That's sensible and I do the same most of the time, but this unit was kindly provided by Vodafone UK and has held up without a case very, very well. And if you are one of those people who don't like cases, then I think this phone will fare well for you too. Let's talk about the big internal diversion difference that always gets brought up when we talk about Samsung phones. I personally have the Exynos 2100 version, or at least I use the Exynos 2100 version. And to me, the performance level differences were imperceivable from the Snapdragon 888 in any devices that I've used using Qualcomm's processor. I think what it boils down to though, is a couple of frames here and there in games, or maybe even a slight speed increase when processing images. Other than that, I literally cannot tell the difference. I think if you're worried about that and or you're worried that you're going to be getting an inferior phone, then I would say don't be. The global Galaxy S21 Ultra with the Exynos 2100 chip is incredible. I could easily put both versions side by side and I'm absolutely confident that not a single person will be able to tell the difference between the two. Why Samsung uses separate chips in various regions is still going to be confusing to many of you out there, but it's not a reason to avoid a Samsung phone as a result. Plus, there is always the bonus that now with the world the way it is, you can just import the Snapdragon version if you're really bothered by synthetic benchmarks. Being completely honest though, you'll notice no difference. So do not worry whether it's Exynos or Qualcomm, the experience is practically the same. The game is out there, I've probably already headed to the comments section, but if you do play a ton of games, the Exynos 2100 is fine, at least to my own eye. If you can tell, let me know. I'm gonna be pretty shocked if you can, but without going on a run, I think I'm guilty of this sometimes to myself. People worry too much about having the best of the best internals and less about the actual smartphone experience. Not that you need to worry about that too much with the S1 and Ultra. It's Samsung's best performing phone of 2021 that isn't affordable. And in terms of like performance levels, it's a flying machine as it should be given the asking price. I gotta say though, the screen is just incredible, even though it is slightly curved at each side. To my eye, it's the best smartphone screen that I've used. And each and every year, I feel like I'm saying that 
with just about every new Samsung top tier phone. The brightness, the contrast, the color, the viewing angles, the detail, you name it, this smartphone screen just nails it. 120 hertz is also similarly incredible. Sure, I will say that a 60 hertz screen for most people is gonna be okay, but a higher refresh rate does enhance that feeling of speed and adds an extra fluidity to animations that I think maybe does make it worthwhile. Is it essential? Probably not, but it's another nice tick in the quality additions box, which I think this phone has in spades. Fluidity though is an area in which Samsung seems to have spent a ton of time in Android 12, which is now available for the S21 Ultra, because the, with, within One UI 4.0, animations feel much better. They are genuinely uber slick as well. I'll admit that I actually used to hate One UI at least a few years ago, but it's slowly growing on me because there are tons of tweaks here and there that are welcome and well thought out. And I think it also helps that updates are getting better and better every single year with every Samsung flagship past and previous. I'm running Android 12 here and this Samsung is going to be committed to keeping this beast supported until Android 14 with another year of security updates. Four years is a long time though when you do keep a phone, but when the RRP is over £1,200, it's just great to see such confidence in the product. But we would love to see more updates over time as well, because I think that's something that a lot of manufacturers maybe forget about, especially on the Android side of the fence. Quickly returning to that display though, before we move on, the in-display fingerprint scanner on this phone is excellent. It's maybe not quite the fastest out there, but for me, it's worked every single time I've used it. And even if I don't quite put my finger in the perfect position on the screen, it seems to work without many issues. It's also quite nicely positioned. It's not too high, nor is it too low in the screen. So you maybe not shuffling your hand to unlock your phone. I like that. I like that personally, as you can kind of confidently grip at your phone and unlock it without adjusting your hand position. And I guess as well on top of that, the haptics that are tied to the display and the and the actual fingerprint scanner itself and just the general UI, those vibrations, they feel super smooth and really good and up there with the best in the industry. And with every and each and every tap and interaction, I do feel that this is a premium experience as it should be. So if you've watched my channel in any sort of capacity, you'll know that I do adore telephoto zoom lenses on phones and boy does the S21 Ultra make it fun to take photos with that extra zoom levels. Even up to 30X, you're getting sharp, precise photos that are expertly exposed with great dynamic range and excellent contrast and detail in every facet of the image. There hasn't been a single instance where I've wanted to take a photo and been left disappointed or frustrated with what the S21 Ultra camera can do. And that's something that isn't usually said, even with top tier phones out there. I've got to say low light is excellent as well. The main lens, that is similarly excellent. The ultra wide and that 10 times periscope zoom lens too. They're also very, very good. I'll admit that I often do forget just how good Samsung's night mode is and how it exposes scenes. I think it's probably criminally underrated even by myself and something I as I just said, I just often forget about, but when I do use it, I really, really appreciate it. I'd say the same for the portrait mode too, which is it's really good and picks up edges quite accurately. And the edge detection itself and fake bokeh effects is kind of add for a really nice added extra for Samsung users out there. I've got to say the only other phone that I've used with such a comprehensive set of cameras is the Mi 11 Ultra, which is another phone that I've enjoyed using for similar reasons, just the sheer flexibility on offer with the camera setup. Uh, if you prefer to have more fine tuning controls, you can always sideload the expert raw app and you can play around with your images and your camera settings. But personally, I do avoid this, but it does offer more, a little bit more fine tuning flexibility, I would say, than the default camera app does allow. Sadly, I've got to admit that I haven't really used the video modes probably as much as I should have with the S21 Ultra. But what I have shot, I think looks great and there is so much you can do with the frame rates and resolutions on offer here, which do go all the way up to 8K resolution. I do think though the higher resolutions start to tax the battery and considering that most people out there don't own an 8K TV or monitor to even consume it, probably a bit of a waste of time for most people out there, especially as the file sizes are pretty darn huge. One thing I found a little annoying though is that you can't actually record 4K UHD at 60 FPS on anything but the main lens. So if you do want a glutter video recording options though, there is plenty on offer here that you can play around with. One unfortunate aspect of the Galaxy S21 Ultra, at least in my experience, has sadly been the lifespan. Is it bad? No. Is it excellent? Well, in my experience, not quite. Can you get a day of calling, texting, maps and gaming out of it? 
Now that might be a little bit tough for some of you out there. Maybe this is where the Exynos model kind of falls behind the Snapdragon version. Gotta say, I don't have any experience with that North American version to compare it against. But most days I am looking for the charger if I'm stuck to the S21 Ultra. Most of the time it does fine and it falls in line with most of the phones that I've used. But on good days, I can't seem to break that seven hour screen on time mark for what it's worth. And I wouldn't say that I do use tons and tons of apps that would tax the battery life. Often, for most of most days out there, it does hover around four to five hours. But again, my usage will differ from yours. It's not an expectation or an exact figure that you can expect. So your mileage just may vary. So in truth, there was probably no need for me to even make this video, but I wanted to share my thoughts as it's almost obvious that the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra is good enough in 2022 and beyond. It was the best phone of 2021, probably at bar none, and that makes it the go-to Android phone. Heck, it's probably the outright best Samsung phone of the past few years, as most of the problems that we've seen on previous models have been addressed and all of the little things kind of add up to the an almost unrivaled composite of the best Galaxy features and functions. It's not all roses though, because Samsung has slowly removed a ton of popular hardware features like micro SD card expansion, the headphone port, MST for payments with terminals that don't support Google Pay, and a few more other little things I'm sure you're going to tell me about in the comments section below. So now the real reason why I made this video. I think with a year of discounts, if you're looking to upgrade your current device, the S21 Ultra is a splendid Android phone that just about anyone out there would be happy with, and it might save you a ton over the S22 series. So if you've made it this far, I want to say thanks for listening to me rant on. I really do appreciate it and I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I have enjoyed making it. And if you have, pop a like and leave a tiger emoji down below to let me know you made it all the way to the end of this video. Then on your way out, tap that subscribe button. But until next time, I'll speak to you later.